I, I always tell people that think that they don't like Enterprise, watch, watch the third and fourth season, or maybe even the second. And 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 skip the horrible music at the beginning. That you know, that's what turns a lot of people off from the, from the start. Um, that you it don't have that, that, you don't have that great you know uh, classical uh, music that um, that all the other shows have that that uh, sort of invest you in the grandeur of what the Federation is and and. Uh, how how difficult it must be to to create a starship or a space station, you know? Yeah, I I liked the opening um, mainly for the visuals mm -hmm. because it was almost all real footage. Yeah, if I and recall, then, only the last three shots in the entire opening sequence are fictional. Right. And have you seen the fourth season? I have, but it not since it aired. Have you seen? And I might the, have skipped uh, some of it. I just remember the ending and being disappointed in that. Have you seen the uh, the the Mirror Universe episodes at the yes. end, sort of toward the end of the season? That had all different, you know, uh, a different beginning, but it was all still real, you know. Except it went with like the HMS Enterprise and stuff like that, and uh, had more of the pirate, you know. Yeah thing I, I really liked that opening i'm a, a, a just an absolute geek for mirror universe episodes which okay. deep space nine did did the most of i think they did half a dozen uh yeah really, e e really even though I, I was disappointed that they did they didn't ex explore more of the origins of starfleet and stuff i still think it's pretty good star trek enterprise i remember recently really recently watching an effort enterprise uh episode i don't remember what it was called but it was the one with uh uh mark carradine is that his name hmm. keith keith carradine yeah maybe it was keith carradine uh yeah. and he was sort of uh, in, in that episode, they, they showed how he was brought up at the same time as, as, uh, Archer and that they were pals and they had a competitive rivalry, uh, you know, to see who was going to be the first one to break, uh, warp two and all this kind of stuff. And it, it, it was a legit origin story for enterprise. I really liked that. Hmm. I wish I could remember the name of it. <laughs> um that's another series that i've got on on uh blu-ray or dvd and i'm kind of making my way through for the fourth or fifth time and it, you know especially given today's uh star trek uh en enterprise is, is brilliant genius writing you know by yeah. comparison yeah like i said it, it's still pretty good star trek um Again, again, I just thought it was a missed opportunity, and, and I don't know why they felt compelled to uh, to just have another enterprise, and it kind of looked like the other one, but that wasn't necessary. Uh, audiences are intelligent and open-minded enough, I think, to explore new things instead of just stick with what's familiar. And yeah. and, and especially when we had already seen in the motion picture. There was a whole other ship called Enterprise, and we never mm -hmm. got to see that. Mm -hmm. The uh, what was it, XCV three thirty, something like that. The ring ship. Right. Where's that? Yeah, it's in the technical manual. <laughs> That's where it is. But um, that could have been really interesting. And you know, they they wanted to start the series off Enterprise uh, on Earth and and make it sort of a the right stuff series, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I would have paid good money to watch that. Uh, that was what they were supposed to do. And I think uh, Braga and Pillar were, didn't, didn't want to hold the show back. They, they, they wanted them to go, you know? So in the beginning, you, you get sort of the Vulcans looking over the shoulder of Starfleet and, uh, 
you know, recommending uh, that they be more judicial and, and sort of hold back. And, and, and then there's this whole tension and feeling of like, come on, we've got to get out there. But that was apparently supposed to be kind of the whole idea of the show. Yeah. It was just keep it stuck on earth. I would have been happy. Right if, yeah. I would have been happy if they didn't jump on the ship and actually go somewhere until the end of the first season. It would have, it would have been a different tack for sure. Again, I, I think they just didn't give the audience enough credit for wanting to see something like that. I'm not sure how but, the audience would have reacted. You know, I think especially back then, there were there was still a mostly positive and pretty strong fan Fear, base for uh, Star Trek that yeah. I, I think most of us would have enjoyed seeing that. You know, something more like Starfleet Origins or something like that. Rather and than I just, also oh, remember, here's another starship, we're going to jump on and go meet aliens. I also remember after Star Trek VI, uh, I heard that they had been floating the idea of a, a Captain Sulu uh, series that I think they were going to call Starfleet Academy for some reason. Um, but once yeah. we'd seen uh, George Takei, uh, you know, as a captain, which was the only way he would entertain being in Star Trek VI, he said, you've got to give me my own ship. So they did. Um, but somewhere in there, uh, before Enterprise and after Voyager, I guess, uh, there was that time period where they were going to, they were thinking about doing a Captain Sulu show and they decided not to because they said George Takei was too old. And boy, talked about missed opportunities. Yeah. That would have been great. Especially since. He was pretty damn awesome as uh, Captain Sulu. <laughs> Not only just that, a, but just since those few then, he's, been in, he's been in Heroes and all other kinds of, you know, uh, his own uh, Broadway thing, Allegiance, and he's done all kinds of, uh, you know, appearances on TV. Star Wars. He, was, he wasn't old at that point, you know. He was. He's always been youthful and vigorous, and uh, even yeah. even. You know, the way that we think of him now as as the, oh, my, you know, uh, he's very youthful uh, at heart, I think. He, he's got those great Asian genes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his, his commentary on Star Trek over the years, I think, has been very wise. And, and uh, he really cares about Star Trek. He's not... Just some actor playing a role. He's heavily invested in Sulu. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, came back to do uh, uh, Mark Zakri's uh, story in, uh, was it Star Trek Continues? Uh, oh. Lorelai, I think, is the name of the episode that Mark Scott Zakri wrote. Uh, oh. And it was, you know, uh, Sulu was. Uh, had gone back in time and had a daughter and lived like a whole life in between these two moments on regular Star Trek. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a great episode. Very well written. Uh, Mark Scott Zakri is always good. Uh, you know, he's the author of the Star Trek, companion which is an excellent book i think now in its third printing big fan of that book big fan of his stuff he's worked on you know another guy who's worked on a jillion shows uh and uh yeah when, when you see uh, original star trek actors on on those shows the fan shows that go for a full series uh you know, you know that they're doing good work. Oh yeah. Uh, 